Hi, my name is Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. This is episode 30, Fight, Flight, or Freeze. I've heard of the fight or flight response as long as I can remember. Perhaps I first learned about it in Introduction to Psychology, or maybe it was before that. It's our animal instinct when our lizard brain takes over due to some kind of threat, whether it's a real or a perceived threat. Real threat being something like a saber-toothed tiger and perceived something like, she's going to leave me. Until I came into recovery, I had never heard that there was a third possible response, which is freeze. The freeze response is especially common when we're children and we can't fight or flee especially if we've grown up in a dysfunctional family. Since I've been in recovery, I've started to hear more and more about fight, flight, or freeze, especially with the ACE study, which stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences Study. They also talk about fight, flight, or freeze. If you're not familiar with the study, you might want to look it up because it's a pretty groundbreaking study that shows that early adverse experiences have long lasting effects. The study defines adverse experiences as potentially traumatizing events. They don't even have to be actually traumatizing, just potentially traumatizing. There's info about the study on the CDC website, which is the Center for Disease Control. But anyway, if you think about the animal kingdom, there are many animals whose go-to response is fight. Those are typically predators like lions. And there are many other animals whose go-to response is flight. Those are typically prey like gazelle. And there's also other animals whose go-to response is freeze. And those are typically prey like a possum. For some of us, our response of choice may become so ingrained in childhood that we continue to utilize it in adulthood. If you've been freezing under pressure your whole life, you may continue to freeze in your adulthood. Likewise, if you've been fleeing or fighting your whole life, you may continue to flee or fight into adulthood. That is, until you've done some real work on yourself, like the 12 steps of recovery, perhaps, or maybe some other kind of therapeutic intervention. Again, these are stress responses when your brain decides you're in danger. You don't have to be in actual danger. Your body, or what I like to call your animal, just has to perceive danger. Our brain thinks we're in mortal danger when the vast majority of the time we're not. This is especially so if the situation is mindful of something stressful that happened in childhood. The thing is, the more activated this stress response gets, the more likely it is to happen again. Think about it. When you're stressed, it only takes a tiny little something to set you off. Whereas when you're calm, the same thing might not bother you at all. So you want to try to get out of this stress response whenever you can and decrease the number of times it happens. I'll talk more about how to handle such situations when you're in the thick of them towards the end of the episode. But I want to convey that it is possible to change our internal reaction to stress. I'll give you an example of how I know that I have changed in this regard. A few weeks ago, I was in a traffic situation where someone was trying to come into my lane and I didn't think that he saw me. So I honked so he wouldn't hit me. He had his window down, his arm was hanging out and he started gesturing angrily and screaming and yelling at me. And it was almost like he was challenging me like, come over here and fight with me. Um, What you should know about me is that I've had a number of times in my life where I have been traumatized in traffic situations, either car accidents or having extremely angry drivers completely flip out on me. So the potential for me to be triggered in a traffic situation is really high. But what happened this time is that I didn't even get a flood of adrenaline. I simply slowed down, moved over to the left, and I thought, bless him, change 
me, which is something that one of my sponsors drilled into me when I was working with her. And it has been an extremely useful tool in keeping me happy, joyous, and free. It was an automatic thought that has come from lots of reprogramming. On top of that, clearly my physiological response changed from what it had been in the past. So I didn't engage with him and my body didn't respond the way that it used to. My animal response changed. It didn't really sink in until after the fact that I hadn't gotten that flood of adrenaline. So I am here to tell you from my personal experience, it is possible to get out of the fight, flight, or freeze response. I am living proof. Now let's talk about things you can do in the moment when one of these stress responses hits. The first is some form of physical activity. The stress response is meant to be followed by a burst of energy. Physical activity uses that energy that has been created by the body and the activity breaks down the stress hormones. I remember one time in particular, I came home on a Friday after a really difficult week and a particularly stressful afternoon. And I knew I need to go for a bike ride. And when I did, I could literally feel the stress chemicals dissipating in my body as my thighs pumped the pedals but that might not work for you. You might need something to do immediately rather than after the fact. So you could go into the bathroom stall at work and do squats or find a place to do jumping jacks. Anything that would increase your heart rate quickly will do. The next thing you might do is use your logical brain change what you're saying to yourself in your head. When we're stressed, we often think things like, I'm going to die. So instead, tell yourself, I am safe. This is my body preparing for battle or flight. And if you say, I am safe, I am safe, I am safe, your body will eventually get the message. But if you keep thinking, I'm going to die, the stress will continue to mount. Another thing you can do, which is helpful in any stressful situation, regardless of how stressful it is, is to breathe purposefully. If you take three to five very deep breaths and pay attention all the way through the inhale, pause, and then pay attention all the way through the exhale, you will get oxygen into your system. When we're stressed, we breathe really shallowly and don't get the level of oxygen we need. So when you start breathing deeply, you're telling your body, I'm not stressed. The last pointer I have for how to get out of this response is to be here now, be in the present moment. One of the ways to do that is to breathe, like I just mentioned, and another is to engage your senses, which bring you into the present moment. So smell something, even if it's your armpit, taste something or lick your finger, touch something, maybe find something that's hot or cold or textured. Listen to see if you can identify what's the farthest sound away that you can hear and try to pay attention to that. Or find the farthest point away and try to focus your vision on that. Whatever sense or senses you decide to engage, make sure that you're really paying attention. Because if you focus on the present moment, you're less likely to be triggered from issues from the past and more likely to reduce the stress response in your body. These are animal instincts, but you can be reprogrammed. I am living proof. If you are someone who was a fighter all the time, you don't have to be. If you are someone who runs away from conflict all the time, you don't have to be. And if you are someone who freezes during conflict all the time, you don't have to be. I am definitely not the kind of person who was a fighter. I hate conflict and I want to avoid it. That's why I was such a people pleaser all those years. 
I can tell you right now that a big improvement in my life as a result of my recovery is that I'm willing to have difficult conversations and to set boundaries with people. I don't want to, but I am willing to. As you probably have learned in your recovery, willingness can get you everywhere, especially if you bring your higher power along. The thing that has helped me understand willingness best, which I probably said before on the podcast is I'm willing to use a needle to take a splinter out of my finger. I don't want to, but I am willing to. This helps me understand the difference between willingness and desire. I'm willing to have a conflict resolution conversation because that means the conflict conflict is going to have some kind of resolution. And if I don't have the conversation, it's never going to end, at least internally for me. If you were to add up all of the different things I didn't deal with in the past, all the different difficult conversations I didn't have, all the boundaries I didn't set, all of which were hanging over my head all the time, it was a never ending battle with stress. I'm pretty sure this is why I lived with low level anxiety my entire life before recovery and why I always had a sense of urgency before I came into recovery. This kind of stuff contributed greatly to all of that. So I have to live with the short-term discomfort of dealing with things like difficult conversations or setting boundaries and enforcing them in order to have the long-term comfort of peace and serenity in myself by dealing with conflict as it arises and nipping it in the bud rather than letting things go on and on and on, as well as finding healthy ways to deal with a natural stress response in my body. I hope this has been helpful for you and that you are able to learn how to have the kind of peace and serenity that I have most of the time. You deserve it. That's it for today. If you like what you've heard here, then you just might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, head on over to my website, which is higherpowercoachingandconsulting.com and click on the contact menu. I'd be happy to schedule a consultation with you to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be sure to get future episodes of my podcast. Thanks again. Thanks again.